In a time where it is supposed that everyone is correct, or somehow everyone is seemingly above debating, it can be hard to tell who is or isn't a charlatan. If you have even half a drop of common sense, it'll be obvious to you that those arguments are ridiculous. That being said, I'll ask this question for you. What are three ways to spot a charlatan? A colleague of mine pointed this out to me and I have yet to be able to unsee it. People who make their videos in their car on a consistent basis are either usually hiding from their life or hiding their audience from that life. This doesn't just go for videos in a car. This extends to videos done away from their life in general. Maybe in a closet or a back room at the local library. The point is that people who don't live this work will separate their real life from their spiritual life and the teaching of spirituality. Because for them, their spiritual life isn't real life. Far too often, if a person cannot see the line between the physical and non-physical, they will claim that there isn't one. It's easy to say, but difficult to spot many times. Best advice I can give, if they are doing their videos in a car, chances are they are hiding from their life. Anytime someone is saying melanated being, this is an attempt to exclude white people without outright mentioning white people. Not only is this passive aggressive and cowardly, but more to the point, there's no such thing as a melanated being. Melanin is present in almost every complex nervous system, regardless of skin pigmentation. So I'll say it once more. There's no such thing as a melanated being. Melanin, along with DNA and spooky kundalini oil, are all forms of particulate matter. No matter how special they are in the physical world, if they exist at all, that does not mean they have anything at all to do with anything non-physical. Even the suggestion that the non-physical world requires something in the physical world contradicts the fact that the non-physical gives rise to the physical. Also, you will find that people who are not black will try and jump on the melanated being bandwagon to get black points without having to live a black person's life. Everybody want to be a nigga, but don't nobody want to be a nigga. I have seen teachers who will claim to be part of the melanated being crew, but at the same time, find themselves teaching a group of white people in secret. My point isn't that white people are or aren't this or that. My point is that if these teachers would tell you half truths such as these, what else would they tell you in pursuit of exploiting you? In terms of the realm of spirit, the non-physical world, melanin isn't special. So calling you a melanated being is more often than not a ploy to exploit you. This is the most subtle yet deadliest of all three of these signs. When a teacher needs to constantly paint their audience and or motivate them into believing what that person is saying as opposed to allowing the truth to stand on its own as truth does. This is generally because what they're saying is not true. But if you feel good about the idea of accepting it, then you're more than likely to do so. They will do things like constantly remind you that you are the gods. These people will give the whole we versus they speech again and again and again to feed your sense of tribalism as opposed to your sense of reason. When someone is painting their audience with flattery and inspiration, it is because their arguments don't have enough force of effect to do the convincing on their own. In conclusion, I'll make it known that there are most certainly different levels to this knowledge and different ways to teach it. I won't ignore that. However, 
in a climate where anything and everything is considered both right and correct, the integrity of the entire field of study becomes untenable. The word tenable means holdable. In this day and age, this word is almost exclusively used to refer to the holding of concepts and ideas. This word is applicable when something is incapable of being maintained by its own argument, or it's incapable of being rationally defensible. If everyone is correct, the integrity of the entire conversation falls away and everything becomes untenable because no one at all will risk the possibility of themselves being wrong. So they eliminate the possibility of wrong, which in that same breath eliminates the possibility of right. That's how those words work. That's what they mean. They define one another. So in the end, as much as they attempt not to be wrong, they inadvertently make it so that they can never be right. It's up to you, but I would suggest you not fall for the hype.